For this problem, we are required to derive an expression for the value of wall shear, wall moment, and mid span deflection. Step number one, show the wall shear and wall moment as unknown. Para sa built-in support sa point A, meron tayong MA or yun yung ating wall moment sa point A. Meron tayong BA or yun yung ating shear sa point A. And same naman dun sa point B. Step number two, Draw the possible shape of the elastic curve of the beam. Niredraw ko yung beam na ang kita lang ay yung elastic curve. Kasi nagpapatong-patong na yung figure para lang mas mabigyang pansin natin yung itsura ng elastic curve. Step number 3. Draw a tangent line at both built-in support. Unahin natin mag-drawing ng tangent line sa point A. Kapag nasa point B tayo, yung distance ng elastic curve at point B is the deviation of point B relative to a tangent drawn to the elastic curve at point A. At mapapansin natin na ang value niyan ay 0. Next naman, sa point B naman tayo mag-drawing ng tangent line. At yung distance ng elastic curve at tangent line sa point A is the deviation of A relative to a tangent drawn to the elastic curve at point B. At kung mapapansin nyo, ang value niyan ay equal din sa 0. Step number 4. Construct the moment diagram by parts. Kung i-analyze natin yung load ng beam, mas maganda kung yung point B yung itetake natin ng axis para sa moment diagram by parts. Kasi kung yung point A yung itetake natin na axis, i-extend pa natin yung ating uniformly distributed load hanggang sa point A. Madadagdagan pa yung ating load. Unahin natin i-drawing yung moment diagram ng shear at A. Ang moment diagram niyan ay patriangle sa positive side. At kapag iminomet natin yung BA sa point B, equal yon sa BA multiplied by L. Next naman is yung MA. Dahil yung point B yung tinitake natin na axis as the built-in support, and base sa rotation ng MA, magkikreate yan ng negative moment. Pwede nyo yung i-verify sa mga available na tables ng moment diagram by parts. Dahil moment na mismo siya, Kaya ang value nito ay MA or pwede natin isulat na negative MA dahil nasa negative side siya. Maglagay tayo ulit ng panibagong axis kasi puno na yung ating positive and negative side. Ang natitira na lang ay yung uniformly distributed load at ganito yung kanyang moment diagram. Kapag iminomet natin yung W sa point A equal yon sa W times length L over 2 multiplied by moment arm L over 4. So, ang moment nito dito ay equal sa WL squared over 8. Pwede din natin ilagay yung negative dahil nasa negative side siya. Step number 5. Compute the deviation at built-in support or yung ating deviation of A over B and the deviation of B over A. Para sa deviation of A over B, ang formula niyan ay equal sa 1 over EI multiplied by the area bounded from point A to B multiplied by bar XA. Para naman sa deviation of B over A, equal yon sa 1 over EI multiplied by the area bounded from point A to point B multiplied by the bar XB. Base sa formula ng deviation na meron tayo, kailangan natin ng distance ng centroid ng moment diagram measured hanggang point A and hanggang sa point B. Unahin natin sa triangle, yung distance na to ay equal sa 2 third ng length at ito naman ay 1 third ng length. Para naman sa rectangle, ito ay equal sa L over 2. At ito naman ay L over 2. Since yung centroid niya ay nasa gitna. Para naman sa second degree curve, yung distance na to ay equal sa 1 fourth ng L over 2. Or equal sa L over 8. At yung distance naman na ito ay equal sa 3 fourth ng L over 2 or equal sa 3L over 8. Therefore, yung distance ng centroid ng second degree curve ay equal sa L over 2 plus 3L over 8, which is equal to 7L over 8. Dahil dalawang beses ko kakailanganin yung area ng moment diagram bounded from point A to point B, so solvin ko na ngayon yung value ng mga area ng moment diagram natin. Para sa triangle, i-denote ko yung area niyan as area 1, which is equal sa 1 half ng length times intensity BAL. Therefore, area 1 is equal to BA L squared over 2. 
para naman sa rectangle, i-denote ko yung area niyan as area 2. Ang area niya na equal sa MA times L. Dito pa lang, pwede mo nang i-include yung negative sign, pero kasi di ba wala tayong negative area. Basta alam mo na dapat sa solution mo is negative yung magiging value nitong rectangular load. Next is the second degree curve. I-denote natin yung area niya as area 3. Ang area niya na equal sa 1 third times yung length nitong second degree curve which is equal to L over 2 times intensity WL squared over 8. And area 3 is equal to WL squared over 48. Gawin na din natin siya dito na negative. Isolve na natin yung deviation of A over B. Equal yan sa 1 over EI. Multiplied by area times bar XA. Yung triangle muna. Ang area niya na equal sa BA L squared over 2. Ang bar XA niya na equal sa 2 third ng L. Next naman is yung rectangle. Nasa negative side kaya minus. Ang area niya na equal sa MAL times bar XA, which is equal to L over 2. Next is the second degree curve, negative kasi nasa negative side, ang area niya na equal sa W L squared over 48, times bar XA, 7L over 8. Yung value ng deviation, katulad ng inexplain ko kanina, ay magiging equal sa 0, at kapag pinag-cross multiply natin yung EI, Sa kabilang side, ito ay magmumultiply na sa 0. Kaya, mawawala na yung EI sa ating equation. By simplifying, ang magagawa nating equation ay BA L cube over 3 minus MA L squared over 2 minus 7W L to the 4th over 384. Tawagin natin yung equation na to as equation 1. Para naman sa deviation of point B over A, equal yon sa 1 over EI, multiplied by the area times bar XB, yung triangle muna, katulad ng ginawa natin kanina, yung area nun ay equal sa BA L squared over 2, multiplied by bar XB, which is equal to L over 3. Next is yung rectangular area, dahil nasa negative side, kaya minus, ang area nun ay equal sa MAL, times bar XB ng rectangle, equal to L over 2. Next is yung second degree curve. Ang area niya na equal sa WL squared over 48, multiplied by bar XB, which is equal to L over 8. Same ng kanina, yung value ng deviation of B over A ay equal din sa 0, at kapag krinos multiply natin yung EI sa kabilang side ng equation, iyan ay magmumultiply sa 0. Kaya mawawala na sa ating equation. By simplifying the solution, equal to sa BA L cube over 6 minus MA L squared over 2 minus W L to the fourth over 384. Tawagin natin yung equation na to as equation 2. For the last step, we need to determine the unknown value of wall shear and wall moment by using the equation na nagawa natin. By using equation 1 and equation 2, pwede natin pag-subtractin yung dalawang equation para ma-cancel out yung MA sa equation. BAL cube over 3 minus BAL cube over 6 is equal to BAL cube over 6. Negative WL to the port over 384 minus negative WL to the port over 384 is equal sa negative WL to the port over 64. Shear A na lang yung unknown, and the value of shear A is equal to 3WL over 32. By using equation 1 or equation 2, pwede na natin makuha yung value ng MA, gamitin ko na lang yung equation 1. Using equation 1, 0, shear A is 3WL over 32, L cube over 3 minus MA, L squared over 2 minus 7WL to the fourth over 384. By simplifying this equation, ilipat lang natin sa kabilang side yung may term na MA, MA L squared over 2, 
is equal to 5W L to the fourth over 384. Pinag-add ko lang yung term na merong W. And yung value ng MA na makukuha natin ay equal sa 5W L squared over 192. Para makuha yung value ng shear B and MB, gagamitin lang natin yung equation ng static equilibrium. Kasi enough na yung known value na meron tayo. By taking the summation of all forces vertical is equal to 0, shear A is equal to 3WL over 32, plus shear B, minus yung load, W times L over 2 is equal to 0. Shear B is equal to 13WL over 32. Para naman makuha yung value ng moment sa point B or yung MB, mag-take tayo ng summation ng moment sa point B is equal to 0 by taking all clockwise rotation as positive. Pwede din naman na sa point A kayo magkuha ng moment nyo. Unahin natin yung shear A. Ang value niyan ay 3WL over 32 which is magkikreate ng clockwise rotation sa point B. Ang moment arm niyan hanggang point B ay L. Next is yung MB. Nagro-rotate yan na pa-clockwise, kaya positive. Minus MA, nag-recreate ng counterclockwise rotation, kaya negative. I-substitute na natin value, 5WL squared over 192. Last is yung uniformly distributed load. Mag-recreate yan ng counterclockwise rotation, kaya negative. At ang moment niyan hanggang point B ay W. L over 2, yung length, times moment R hanggang point B, L over 4 is equal to 0. By computation, the value of MB is equal to 11 WL squared over 192. Yung last na hinahanap sa problem na to ay yung value ng deflection sa mid span. Magdrawing tayo ng tangent line sa point A. At yung distance ng elastic curve at tangent line sa point C ay equal sa deviation of point C relative to a tangent drawn to the elastic curve at A. Kaya sa point A ako nagdrawing ng tangent line. Kasi kapag sinolve ko yung deviation of C over A, ang area lang na kailangan ko is yung area bounded from point A to point C. Pero kapag sa point B ako nag-drawing ng tangent line, although yung distance ng elastic curve at tangent line sa point C ay equal sa deviation of C over B, and both deviation is equal to the value of deflection at point C. Kaso, kapag sinolve ko na yung value ng deviation of C over B, Ang kailangan ko na area is yung area bounded from point C to point B. Kung mapapansin nyo, mas madaming area yung papasok sa ganong solution. Kaya mas piliin natin na sa point A mag-drawing ng tangent line para dalawang area lang yung papasok sa solution. By computing the value of deviation of C over A, ang formula niya na equal sa 1 over EI multiplied by the area bounded from point A to point C multiplied by bar XC. Kakailanganin natin ng distance na ito ng triangle, tawagin natin yung distance na yan as y. By ratio and proportion, y is to L over 2 is to BAL over L. And y is equal to BAL over 2. Actually, kahit hindi mo naman na-isolve yung y, kasi ito, nasa kalahati siya. I-expect mo na na yung value niyan ay kalahati nitong BAL. Isolve na natin yung value ng deviation of C over A, equal yon sa 1 over EI. Yung area muna ng triangle, bounded from point A to point C, equal yon sa 1 half. Ng length, L over 2, kasi hanggang A to C lang. At yung intensity nun ay equal sa BAL over 2. And bar XC is equal sa 1 third ng L over 2. Minus yung area ng rectangle, Ang area niya na equal sa MA times length L over 2 multiplied by bar XC equal yon sa kalahate ng L over 2 or L over 4. Isimplify natin yung equation. Ito ay equal sa 1 over EI. Pinagmultiply ko na lahat ng value. Ito ay equal sa L cube over 48. Then yung natira is yung value ng shear A. I-substitute ko lang which is 3WL over 32. Next is L squared over 8. Then, i-substitute ko lang yung value ng MA which is 5W L squared over 192. And the value of deviation of C over A is equal to negative W L to the fourth over 768 EI.
Ang ibig sabihin ng negative sign sa value ng deviation of C over A is nasa ilalim ng tangent line yung elastic curve sa point C. Since equal yung length ng deviation of C over A sa value ng deflection sa point C, we can write that the value of deflection at point C is equal to WL to the fourth over 768 EI. And the direction is downward.